picking up where we left off yesterday. This is objective five. We're talking about properties of real numbers. We're going to finish this today. We're going to do a little bit of practice on the properties of real numbers. And then we're going to go back and talk about properties of equality. Okay? I told you yesterday properties of real numbers deal with what? Real numbers. Any number in this class and things that you can do with those real numbers like what can we do with them? What shortcuts can we take? Things when we're adding and things when we're multiplying. You can switch them around. You can change the groups if you wanted to. You can times by one. You can add zero. You can add opposites. You can multiply by reciprocals. All in order to make our math easier and quicker. Does that make sense? That's what properties are. They are rules that you can do to make your math quicker. Okay? Um, versus in a minute, in a little while, our properties of equality are going to deal with shortcuts that you can take when we're dealing with equations. Okay, what can you do to make your equations easier? Okay, so here we go. Let's finish up distributive property. I'm going to just start at example seven. I know we did that yesterday, but that's okay. I'm just going to start back just to get our mindset back. Can you normally, PEMDAS, we add x and 2? Can we add x and 2? No. You cannot add things unless they look the same. Okay, we talked about banapples yesterday, right? Okay, fourth log decided they were going to Google and see if banapples were a real thing. And I told him I didn't think there was anything called a banapple. And then first block told me that on, is it Zoe 101, there's banapples. And I'm like, well, that just ruins everything now. No, you know, I can't use it. I'm going to have to think of something else, you know. Um, third block last year, last semester, they said dogs. You know what dogs are? Cats and dogs. Like you have 10 cats and two dogs because you have 12 dogs. I'm like, no. <laughs> anyway, so whatever you want. At least somebody likes our funny jokes. So anyway, you cannot add or subtract things that do not match. You can multiply anything. So I want you to know that. You can multiply anything. You cannot add or subtract unless they match. So we cannot add x and 2. So when we can't do it one way, you can't just give up and say, mm, not solvable, can't do this problem. There is no answer. You've got to somehow figure out another way around it. And another way around it in this case is to distribute. We're going to take the number that's on the outside of the parentheses and we're going to multiply it. And Lindsay told us yesterday that because it's distributive that we have to give it to both of them. Everything that's in the parentheses. Okay, so 5 times x and everybody says, Ms. Gordon, you can't multiply that. 5 and x don't match. What did I tell you? You can multiply anything. I don't care if it matches or if it doesn't match it. What you do is you take 5 and x in order to multiply them you just smush them together. Smush them. That's what I say. Okay so 5 times x is 5x and then 5 times 2 they do match so go ahead and multiply them. 5 times 2 is 10. So do I write it like so? No. Because it's a positive 10 you have to put a sign between it and say plus 10. Okay, if it's a positive, you write plus whatever. If it's a negative, you write minus whatever you have. Okay, so then we would go to example 8. And we said we were done with example 7 because can you add 5 x's with just a plain old 10? Again, in order to add or subtract, you mu they must match. Okay, so you're done. And that's what's weird. That's what we're going to feel weird about today at Gregory because we want our numbers to be like two, three, negative one out. We like one little answer, and that's what we think our answer should be. Again, we're not solving for anything. There is no equation. All we're doing is getting rid of the parentheses. The goal is, the goal is, the goal is, y'all aren't convincing. I'm just going to say it until you convince me. The goal is, the goal is, I need convincing here, please. The goal is, are you sure you're going to what? Really? What are you going to do? Is that it? You're like, what do I say now? Is that it? Is that all you're going to do? Yes. Okay. Here we go. You still have some work on the repeating stuff to do, by the way. Okay. So, can you add X and A? 
No. But what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I'm, I used to be a cheerleader. Can you tell? What are we going to do? Oh, come on. Negative 7 times x is negative 7x. I'm going to be one of those boring teachers, if that's the way you're going to be, and I'm going to be like, negative 7 times positive 8 is negative 56. So because it's negative, we're going to say, I can't do that, sorry. And we're going to say what? Subtract 56. And so here's what I'm going to ask you. Somebody in first block said, they didn't understand. They're like, I thought you didn't want two signs because they see a negative 7x and a negative 56. What I don't want you to do is I don't want you to say this plus negative 56. You with me? Even though those two things are the same, I don't want double signs there because the plus negative or the minus a positive or the minus a negative, everybody agree, that's confusing, right? So I don't want you to write this. If this is a negative, negative 7 times positive 8 is a negative 56. If it's a negative, then simply write minus 56. Okay, can you add those or subtract them? Why not? Because they're not the same. They don't match. Okay, how about example 9? What's different about it? Okay, you yeah, know. Okay, um, what's different about this one? It's on the left. Is it okay that it's on the left? Yeah, it's fine. Can you subtract Z and 12? Does a zebra and a plain old 12 match? No, you can only add, subtract zebras from other zebras. You with me? If you had five zebras in your yard and you somehow took two of the zebras away, 5Z minus 2Z, then you would be left with 3Z. But you can only add and subtract zebras with other zebras. You follow? Okay. So you can't subtract those. So what you can do is you can take the number. And normally I work left to right. Okay. So 3 times Z. So I use the left one first. 3 times Z. Z3, 3Z. Put your number in front properly. Don't say Z3, please. Okay. And 3 times, help me out. Negative 36 or 36? What's the 12? It's a negative. And a positive times a negative is a negative 36. And because it's negative 36, we write minus 36. If it were positive, we'd write plus. Okay? Try 10 on your own. See what you can do with 10. Try 10 on your own. For an answer, for number 10. Don't all jump at once. Go, Hannah. What's Hannah got? I hear negative 4B plus 20. How many think negative 4B plus 20? I got some takers. Anybody else have a different answer? Does anybody have negative 4B minus 20? I have some. So the question is this. And we did, it was about half and half first block. Here we go. Can you subtract B minus 5? No. So we take the negative 4 and we're going to distribute it. Because our goal is to get rid of the parentheses. Negative 4 times B. Negative 4B. You are so much fun. Negative 4 times what, Jared? Negative 5. And a negative times a negative is a positive. And 4 times 5 is 20. So because it's positive 20, we will write plus 20. Any questions on that? Does that make sense for those that had the minus 20? That it's a negative times a negative, which is a positive. Okay? All right. Let's try some practice. We are finished.